Evening guys, I uh, hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, we've finally been experiencing some decent weather here for a change. <clears throat> Although I've only just returned from Halifax. I was up there for a week and it's also very hot there as well. Uh, so anyways, I just wanted to give an update on the uh, the police diorama and I've also decided what it is that I'm going to call it uh, so this is one of the figures that I'm using uh, master box of course and this is from their uh, dangerous curves series so that's actually what I'm going to call the dioramas dangerous curves so uh, but anyway yeah, so this is the this is the kit that I use for the cop and I'm not finished yet but I'm getting very close so this is um, the first figure I've painted uh, well I painted other figures like Boba Fett and that sort of thing but this is the first human figure that I've painted and actually I'm quite happy with how it came out uh, so there's a long long ways to go but very happy with it uh, let me see if I get some better light here yeah, there we go so I painted her up um, not exactly like the California Highway Patrol um, their pants are essentially the same color as the shirt uh, but I wanted to have a little bit of color there so I went with the brown pants um, you can see I still have to paint the boots and I was going to use this cowboy style hat uh, but I didn't like it, it looked a bit too big so in another master box figure kit I found this ball cap so I use that. Um, still, oops, sorry. Still have uh, quite a bit of putty work to do there to make it fit better. And I also still need to do her hair. Uh, but she's about 90, 95% complete. Uh, I tried painting or putting some paint for the badge and the shoulder patches uh, but what I ended up doing was printing my own decals for those and it came out much much better I also put one on the front of the hat uh, not sure if you can see that or not so what I did is um, I used a laser laser jet printer to print those uh, the nice thing that I found out about using a laser jet is you don't have to seal the decal. You don't have to put any decal bonder or anything on there. Um, the only reason you have to use a decal bonder, I guess, on the inkjet is because the ink is not waterproof. Uh, but I guess the toner on the laser jet, I guess, is I guess it's waterproof because uh, I didn't do anything. I just printed them out here. I just printed them out, cut them off the sheet, dipped them in water, and. Uh, didn't have any issues with them. I did do a test on a larger one here. Uh, you can ignore this part. Uh, I screwed that up myself with my impatience, but you can see there, uh, no run, it, no runs, and I did move this around and put decal solvent on it, or microsol on there. Didn't affect it at all, so quite happy with that so if you have a laser jet printer at home or access to one at work um, you can buy laser jet decal paper um, but I can't see why the inkjet paper wouldn't work either uh, so it is just a little bit of a ramble there I've stirred it on the second figure she's 
pretty scary looking at this point, but the detail in these Master Box figures is pretty amazing for the size. Um, I've started working on the body of the Ferrari. Um, actually hoping to get this painted this week. I'm uh, planning to take a, a few days off work, uh, do a little bit of fishing and stuff like that, but hoping to get some modeling in as well. Um, that's pretty much it for what I can show you at this desk. Um, I'll just take you over here and just give you a very quick update on where I am at the base. Uh, so just give me one sec, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I have to go into shaky camera mode here for a bit. Uh, so not really a whole lot done on this. Um, I got my ground uh, base covered, or base colored I should say. Uh, I just need to put some dirt on there, I got my rocks glued in. Um, I have this skull here, but uh, I think it might be a bit too big. Uh, I might cut it down and kind of embed it, uh, or I might get another skull, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I got my rocks glued in here. Um, got my hole drilled here, this is where the wires for the police car will go down. Um, and here's where my battery is going to go, and you see I have another hole there. So this is where my battery and switch will go for the uh, push bar lights on the police car. So I'm going to um, put a mixture of dirt and rocks on this. Uh, unfortunately I'm going to have to try and paint that as well. Um, it's amazing, a bag of dirt that looks like desert sand is <laughs> insanely expensive. Um, so I'll uh, just have to use some local dirt and some paint to try and simulate desert gravel. Uh, and add some vegetation, more painting and weathering on these rocks. Uh, I'm going to incorporate this old toy uh, wagon wheel that I found somewhere. Probably try and put that in there as well. Haven't decided yet what what I'm going to do with this side of the road here. Um, like I said I have a, a large area here with, with essentially nothing in it. Uh, but something will come to me somewhere along the line. Um, so anyways guys, that's an uh, update on the Dangerous Curves diorama for I think my next update I'll have this sand in or this ground in. I'll have the sign, should have the sign in place by then as well. Um, I should have the cop finished and I might even have the cop car permanently attached by then. Uh, not 100 sure about that yet. Uh, so anyways, that's pretty much it. So as always, thanks for watching and hope you stay tuned for our updates. She lived on a curve in the road in an old tar paper shack on the south side of the town on the wrong side of the track.